Hello, and thank you for watching Science 360, Today's Chemistry, Tomorrow's Fuels. We all know that chemistry is important to our everyday lives, but when was the last time we've ever spent much time thinking about chemistry? Think about this. Each day we use tens of millions of barrels of oil to power our cars, trucks, airplanes, and trains. We use oil to make transportation fuels like gasoline and diesel fuel. These fuels power our way of living. Without them, just getting to soccer practice would be a major headache. But oil is a limited resource. That means that sooner or later, we'll have to find another source of fuel to keep things moving. So why should any of this make us think about chemistry? Well, there's a professor right here at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill named Maurice Brookhart, who's been working with Alan Goldman from Rutgers to improve a method that allows us to make transportation fuel from carbon-based sources like coal. And Dr. Brookhart is a chemist. We'll learn a lot more about Dr. Brookhart a little later. But first, we need to discuss the chemistry behind transportation fuels and how we synthesize these fuels now. Then, we'll see how Dr. Brookhart and his colleagues are improving this process. Today, most cars run on either gasoline or diesel fuel. And chemistry is important in determining the properties of these transportation fuels. For example, chemistry determines the form or phase of a fuel. Matter exists in three phases, solid, liquid, and gas. But remember, when we say gas, we're talking about the phase of matter. I'll say gasoline if I want to refer to the fuel. Both gasoline and diesel fuel are made up of chains of carbon and hydrogen called alkanes. And the number of carbon atoms in an alkane determines what its phase will be. That's because the phase of a material, solid, liquid, or gas, depends on how well the molecules of that material stick together. If the molecules of a substance don't stick at all, then the material will be a gas. If the molecules stick together pretty well, then the substance will be a liquid. Substances where the molecules stick together best of all are usually solids. It turns out that longer alkanes, those with more carbon atoms, tend to stick together better than shorter alkanes. You can think of these sort of like long, wet spaghetti noodles. Clearly, noodles are not great at sticking together, but long noodles, like spaghetti noodles, sure do a better job than short macaroni noodles. Let's look at some real alkanes to see how this relationship between the length of the alkane and its phase works in real life. Here's a butane lamp. Butane is an alkane with only four carbon atoms. We can see that butane is a gas, and you're probably familiar with the other gaseous alkanes. Methane, ethane, and propane are all useful fuels as well. This is heptane. Heptane contains seven carbon atoms, so its molecules stick together better than butane's. This means that heptane will be a liquid. Very long alkanes tend to be solids because their molecules stick together best of all. For example, this is icosane, a molecule with 20 carbons per molecule. And you're probably familiar with others, like this paraffin wax that you might have in your kitchen. Transportation fuels, like gasoline and diesel fuel, tend to be made of intermediate length alkanes, so they're liquids. In fact, diesel fuel is made of a blend of alkanes ranging from 10 to 15 carbons per molecule. So how do we synthesize a transportation fuel like diesel fuel? We've been able to make our own fuel for years. For example, in the 1920s, German scientists invented a way to convert carbon-containing materials like coal or biomass into diesel fuel. This is called the fischer tropsch process. And today, South Africa uses this technology to produce much of its own transportation fuel. Let's take a minute to discuss how the fischer tropsch process works. As I said earlier, the fischer tropsch process allows us to turn a carbon-rich material, like coal, into diesel fuel, a useful transportation fuel. First, the coal is heated and reacted with oxygen to form a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas called synthesis gas, or just syngas for short. This process of going from coal to syngas is called gasification. 
The heart of this process involves a catalyst. A catalyst is added to the syngas, which enables the syngas to be converted into alkanes. This may sound a bit like black magic now, but don't worry, we're going to come back to catalysts very soon. First, we need to finish making our fuel. The last step is to separate the alkanes that we want, those between 10 and 15 carbons long. This is done with a purification process called distillation. In short, we've just started with coal or some other carbon source and converted it into diesel fuel.